What? I can't hear you. Alright, so last night we got the jack shaft tacked into place. Now, like I was saying in the last video, uh, we're going to be hard mounting the jack shaft. That way it's locked into one place and it's locked to where the belt tension is at its proper tension. And then for the chain, uh, we're, instead of moving the jack shaft back and forth to tension the chain, which we can't do because of the belt, we're just going to be doing a chain tensioner. So, I've been looking up videos on the belt proper belt tension for a player's Razor 900, and I just can't find any information on how tight the belt should be. And so I've been looking at videos of belt replacements, and it looks like this is a little bit too loose. Uh, it looks like on a player's Razor 900, the belt is actually pretty tight on, on the CVT system, so let's, uh, let's move this thing forward a little bit more and get this belt a little bit tighter. Does that look right? I don't know. I've yet to find a video where they do this. I really need to know how much the belt flexes when you push up and down on it. So I'm gonna call it good for now because I can adjust this a little bit. You can see the belt is like almost flat. I can shrink this up a little bit more to tension the belt a little bit more. So I'm gonna call it good for now. And just, I, I, I think it's pretty good. Now I had to put this bearing kind of way back here. You can kind of see that there's a pretty big gap in between the bearing and where the primary is mounted, but because the belt's gonna be pulling it this way and the chain has to be right here, and the chain's gonna have to be pulling it this way, so I'm hoping that those forces are gonna kinda cancel each other out, so there's not gonna be a really hard pulling force on this thing going one direction or the other, so I'm not really worried about this thing sticking out pretty far, plus we have uh, all of this to support it, and it's an inch and a quarter axle, so there's, there's no way this thing's bending. So I'm gonna call this good for now. Let's move on to working on something else. Alright, we can finally start working on building the main chassis. Now, I, I lowered the beginnings of the main chassis all the way down because I'm going to be building this thing like the suspension is collapsed, so therefore I can just build the frames slightly higher than the rear and front axles. That way I can just be sure that when the suspension moves all the way up or the suspension collapses, uh, nothing, the, this isn't going to hit the frame or anything, so the seat's not going to hit the hitting knees, make sure the drive shaft's not going to hit the engine and all that kind of stuff. Now, this is gonna honestly be the most time consuming part because I not only want this thing to look really cool, I want I need it to perform really well. So this is gonna take the longest with trying to make this thing look really cool as well as look up like a rock bouncer, try to figure out where the tubing's gonna go in the best places. So yeah, this is probably this is gonna take a little while. So let's start with uh, let's start with the front end and get the engine finalized in its position.
All right, so I got two mounts for the engine kind of tacked into place. I don't want to do any more mounts for the engine simply because the sprocket on the engine is a 525. I thought it was 520, so therefore I bought 520 sprockets and chain and everything, but it turns out it's 525 pitch. So I had to buy 525 chain and sprockets, and we're still waiting for those things to get here. This is 530 chain, by the way, in a 520 sprocket. That's why the 530 chain is really loose on here and a little bit loose on the sprocket on the engine. So I don't want to fully mount the engine just yet simply because I'm, I don't want to fully mount the engine and then try to get the 525 sprocket and chain on here and it's too tight. So once a 525 chain gets here, we'll do this, we'll put the sprocket on and then do the chain and make sure and get it to its perfect tension. Right now it's pretty good. It's a little bit tight, but it, it's pretty good. And then once we do that, then we can fully uh, mount the engine. Now, I do know that you're really not supposed to, I mean, you can do this, but you're really, it's not a professional job by stitching tubing like this together. A better man than me would have bent this entire piece of tubing out of one piece and not had to stitch it together with each bend. Ideally, that's really the, the Ideally, that's the better way to do it, is just bend this all out of one piece of tubing, but that's, I don't have the patience for that, nor do I have the skill to know where each bend is going, how much of a bend, exactly where the bends need to be, all that kind of stuff, so I do it this way. It's not, I mean, it's not the worst thing ever. It, it, it's not a weakened, it's not structurally weakened, but it's, it, do, it doesn't look professional, and, uh... But I, guess, but I guess if it gets the job done, then it gets the job done. Alright, so this is the uh, winch uh, for the CBR1000 project. I'm putting this on here as mock-up because I have to build the frame around this. I was kind of thinking, is 5,000 pounds a little bit too strong for this size project? But I'd rather have an overpowered winch than an underpowered winch. So we're going to go with another 5,000 pound. And uh, once I go to Harbor Freight again, I'll buy another one so I can put this one back on the CBR 1000. But in the meantime, let's use it for mock-up. Now, we also have to make room for a radiator up front. Because I think putting a radiator in the back, that's way too complicated. Radiator lines going all over the place. I don't want I don't want to do that with this project. So I already bought a radiator on eBay. It is this size. It's a little bit big. Uh, but I chose a big radiator so therefore we don't have, have overheating issues with this engine. So the radiator is going to have to go in between the winch and the engine, something like that. It's going to go straight up and down. So we also have to make room for that. Now, this morning I bought some bump stops for the front and for the back, so therefore, uh, you know, you guys know what bump stops, stops are for. So, now, they're going to take about a week to get here, so in the meantime, uh, while we're waiting for the shipping, to, while we're waiting for them to get here, I'm going to be using bolts uh, to mock them up. So basically, I'm going to be welding a, a two-inch plate onto the axles right here, and then that's what, that's what these are for. These are for connecting the bump stops to. So I'm going to be welding the, uh, these more plates onto here, and then that is where we're going to attach the bump stops to. So in the meantime, we're going to use bolts, and so therefore we can weld this stuff on and mock it up.
All right, so the mounts for the bump stops are tacked into place. Again, the bolts are just temporary until the actual bump stops get here. So I think the I think uh let's start working on the rear section. Let's let's start figuring out where the seat's gonna go. Will this hold my weight? This is not sketchy. Let's hope it holds my weight. Okay, yep, it's good, it's good. Just don't fall back. So I think that this is where I'm gonna have to sit on this thing, which means that when the frame is all raised up, uh, I'm gonna be pretty high off the ground, but my leg's gonna be directly over the CVT. I will be putting, a, obviously, a piece of plate over it, so I'm not just having my exposed leg sitting on the CVT. It's a very relaxed seating position. You know, leaning back, don't lean back too far. Seems gonna be wild to drive. Uh, I hope I'm not making the seat too high off the ground. I don't want to feel top heavy in this thing. Mosquitoes. This is the other seating position I could do. You know? But, but my legs are right next to a drive shaft. I don't know. Neither, neither of them are perfect. But I think the other one where I'm sitting more closely and my legs are up like that, that's a lot more comfortable. Yeah. I, 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 guess, I guess just put the seat, you know, forward like this. So therefore, most of my weight's more in the middle. The seat's high off the ground either way. So I'm just, I'm looking at this and I'm realizing that, you know, if, if the seat is going to be here, I'm like trying to think like how high is the frame going to be, steering wheel is going to have to be up here, this, uh, this bar is going to have to be somewhere right here for the steering wheel and then the frame is going to be, I'm realizing that if I, if I left the seat like this, um, the frame's gonna have to be super tall, and because I kind of made this the frame really skinny, it's gonna kind of look ridiculous with it being skinny and really tall. So, because the shocks that I bought, they are they have 14 inches of suspension travel, and again, right now I'm building the frame with uh, it sitting at its the collapsed suspension. So imagine my head, you know, the very top of the suspension, imagine my head being 14 inches higher. Imagine me sitting 14 inches higher off the ground. So that's, obviously it's not going to ride at full top suspension travel, but already this thing's kind of top heavy. I'm already high off the ground, and I'm sitting at the lowest the frame's going to be. So, so I'm realizing that I have to get the seat as low to the ground as possible, uh, it does mean that, you know, my leg's gonna have to be like sitting like this over the CVT, but it's gonna make the f make the whole frame lower, gonna get the seat lower, gonna get my weight lower to the ground, so it's just gonna be better. It's just not gonna be as much as comfortable of a seating position because my legs are kind of they're gonna oh <laughs> oh don't do that. You know, my legs are going to have to have to be like, you know, up here, so, uh, yeah, let, let's, let's figure out how to get the seat a lot lower to the ground. Ow. So I'm actually having to resort to uh, using pipe because I ran out of the tubing that is the thicker wall. So we're just going to have to use pipe, which is fine anyway because this is actually a thicker wall and with a bend in it, you want something that's thick and strong.
Alright, so every time I look at this, I just, I can't stand it. To me, this just, it screams rookie, and I hate it. Uh, it's just the bends are, you know, the way I st have to stitch these together, it's just, I can't stand it. So, I just bent this, just bent this up to replace it. We're going to attempt to replace it with this. And instead of kicking it out and down, it's, I'm just gonna kick it down, go under this, and then go back up, and then straight up to the front. So what that does mean is we have to cut it, we have to cut apart all that stuff we just tacked into place to replace this, and then we have to hopefully try to re-tack it in the exact same place once we once we replace this. Alright, that definitely took a long time to do, but it looks a whole lot better in person. I don't know if you can really tell on camera if it looks better, but yeah, that just looked I had to do I had to cut this, I had to bend I had to bend this in a little bit to meet the other tube on on the on the front, but it, it still looks way better. Alright, so I mocked these up to try and like figure out, you know, and honestly, I'm not really liking it right now. When I look at this, I just think of a bathtub. So, with the back end, with these, uh, you know, rolled pieces, I was thinking like maybe the two pieces in the back can like, you know, bend down and kind of, you know, maybe that would look cool, but... I, right now, it just it, it looks too weird. It doesn't look like a rock bouncer. So let's try something else. I just punched a hole in my finger. Ouch! Oh, that's a hole in my finger. Oh, wow. That's... Yeah, that's a hole in my finger. Holy crap. Yeah, that welding wire just went right through the glove and right into my finger. Ah, oh, man, that hurt. It's not bleeding, which is good, so... It... Carterized it, or whatever it's called. 
That <laughs> that hurt. That hurt. Wow. Let's try this again, not have my finger right there. So I know this thing looks a little goofy right now, but hopefully once I add more tubing to this, it'll look a little bit better. But right now, I, I need to see if I have enough headroom. I wonder if I have too much headroom. I got a decent amount of headroom here. How am I gonna fit in this thing? <laughs> I mean, I, I guess my legs are just gonna have to be just right here. How do I fit in the Grave Ninja so well? You know, that thing is, it's, it's perfect. It's tiny, but it's very comfortable. You know, I sit in that thing perfectly. But yet with this, it's a lot bigger, but yet I'm struggling to figure out where I'm gonna sit. As far as this, there's plenty of headroom. Not so much on the back. Whoa. Mr. Kitty is back. Hello. Yeah, I, th I, think, I think it's good. Let's keep building, I guess. <laughs> So this is why this is taking forever. I tack stuff into place and I stand back and look at it and I just go, I, I don't like it. it, it it's, it's not, I deal, I, my head's going to be here, I'm going to be here, so I don't need all this space up front. I don't need all this, so I ideally I, I need this to move back a little bit and I guess I can, I can, I can take these off and then bend this down a little bit more. Possibly also bring this in a little bit. We don't have to have it this wide at the top. So bring the top in a little bit. Same with the front. And just try to have this more down a little bit to give it more, to push it back a little bit further. Does that make sense? I don't know. Yeah, let's let's little re rearrange some stuff and see if we can get this to look a little bit better. I guess that's, I guess it's a little bit better. It's definitely leaned back a lot further. This is further back. 
And the tubing that I put in the middle, I can raise it up. So, yeah, this is a. Uh, <sighs> All right, finally happy with this. Let's let's move on. Keep adding stuff. Angry eyebrows. The look of all rock bouncers. Alright, so we got a pretty good amount of progress done on the roll cage. Uh, I find that when I'm working on this, trying to build the roll cage, I like more than half of the time I'm working on this, I just find I end up just staring at this thing, trying to trying to like think, trying to I'm looking at pictures of rock crawlers and rock bouncers, trying to get inspiration for how they build the roll cages, trying to make this thing look really cool, as well as be structurally sound because I do want to make this to where it worst case if we do end up rolling this thing over I don't want this roll cage folding like a pretzel underneath me so I do want to make this thing structurally sound as well as look really cool and uh, not have a million pieces of tubing going everywhere now I'm kind of uh, honestly I'm a little pondering changing the name of this project I know I've been calling this thing a rock bouncer for four videos now but let's be honest, I'm more I'm more building a rock crawler. This thing is a rock crawler. It's I just want to make it look like a rock bouncer, so I'm I'm a little I'm pondering changing the name of this project because I don't want to build something that I'm calling a rock bouncer and then not rock bounce this thing. And you guys are like, well why'd you call it a rock bouncer if you're not gonna rock bounce it and just do rock crawling? So I'm I'm considering just calling this thing a rock crawler from now on. Because let's be honest, that's exactly what I'm building, it's just a rock crawler. But I do know that I've been calling this thing a rock bouncer for four videos now. Is, is it too late to change the name of the projects when I've uploaded four videos now? I don't know. I don't know. If, if I end up changing the titles of the last three videos to rock crawler, then I've decided to just start, start calling this thing a rock crawler. Now, a couple days ago, I uploaded part two of this project, and you guys definitely expressed your concerns with the CBT system that I installed on this project. Now, I, I do agree that it's, it may not work that well. It may, you know, first gear may not work, second gear may not even work, third gear may, may not even work on this thing because of how, how you know, the RPM of the engagement of the primary who knows? The reason I installed it is because I've always wanted to see what happens when you have a motorcycle engine and a CVT system on a project like this. I've always wanted to see what happens. Worst case, if it sucks, I don't have to keep it on here. Worst case, if it doesn't work, I can always just take it off and replace it with chains and sprockets, but I want to see first, does it work, and how well does it work, does it suck, how much does it suck, and all that kind of stuff. So this is a perfect project to test to see what happens when you have 
two clutches, two gearing systems, and high low and all that kind of stuff. That's that's what I, that's the reason I installed this on this project. Now, anyway, next video of this project, we get to work on more of the more of the frame, the roll cage. We get we have to add a bunch more stuff to the back, more stuff to the top, front. We got to get the engine more permanently installed in the frame so it's not held up by the ceiling, as well as get the engine get the uh, seat installed and all that kind of stuff. So that's going to have to be for next video of this project. For now, I get to end this video. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next video. That thing's fast. There's the anchor guy coming out. <laughs> what? I can't hear you. Yep, say it louder. No, keep it running. That's right. <laughs> This thing is street legal, right? Yeah, it's got everything. It's got everything you need. It's street legal. That is hilarious. We're driving a street legal motorcycle, and, and of course, the the angry neighbor has to come out and cuss us out. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't really hear what he, what he was saying, but he was saying something like, you got to put that thing away. <laughs> that thing's yeah, obnoxious. This thing's sick, though. That was like, whew. So you guys have been wanting an old man part two. I guess that was it. We finally got him to come out and cuss us out again over a motorcycle <laughs> over this time. Over a motorcycle. Yeah, so a bit exciting, but you know, at least he didn't come out onto my driveway this time. So <laughs> that's a, yeah. He stayed on his side, which he was stayed, good. Yeah, yeah, he stayed, you know, in front of his house this time. So <laughs> I, I don't know. So if actually, Bought this Grom like two years ago. I, I think I did one video on this thing and it just, it sat forever because it never ran right. But we were like, let's pull this thing out. Let's, let's play with it. And it's, it's now running. It works. It, it seems to run fine. It's just, it always had an idling issue, which this thing is idling really high now, but at least it's idling this time.